As we head up to uh, 22 away from 11 o'clock uh, here on ENCA. Good morning, I'm Gareth Edwards. What does the coronavirus uh, and the endangered species of the world have in common? Well, with the current outbreak of COVID-19, uh, global attention has certainly been drawn to the health risks uh, posed by eating wild animals and possibly even interacting with them. But uh, will this help the plight of trafficked animals. We've seen a number of countries banning and even suspending uh, the trade of wildlife as it suspects that animals are the cause of COVID-19. Let's find out more about how the coronavirus is connected to wildlife and the eating of wild game. I'm joined uh, on the show by a multi-award winning television presenter and filmmaker Bonnet de Bod. Uh, many of course will recognize you Bonnet from Strip. You're still riding uh, that wave high which is great. People still watching Strip. They're still what downloading Strip and they're going to want to know when Strip 2 is coming out. We'll talk about <laughs> that now. But as part of your research in Strip, and this is why I wanted to talk to you, uh, you had a chance to travel around the world, but primarily you went over to Asia, China, etc. And that's where this seems to have come from. Just tell me about your experience there, and then we need to discuss uh, the issues around the suspending of wildlife trade. It's not as easy as that. Right. So, um, you, you know, there are many theories surrounding the new coronavirus, and one must always be very cautious when theories are being thrown around. And I say new coronavirus because if we, Gareth, simply refer to it as, as the coronavirus, we may as well be talking about the common cold because coronaviruses are part of a large family of viruses that are zoonotic, meaning transmitted between animals and people. But yes, so there are, are many rumors around it, many theories, and um, one such theory, and this is coming from credible scientists, that this new virus originated at a seafood market in Wuhan. Now they call it a seafood market, but it is basically a wildlife market. And even though it hasn't been proven, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it is indeed the case. And I will tell you why I say this. I have filmed undercover at many of these uh, wildlife markets in Asia, and I was absolutely shocked at the conditions the animals are kept in. Tanks with uh, an assortment of marine wildlife in terribly unhygienic conditions. You have captured land animals in kept in tiny little cages right on top of each other. You have chopped up body parts, urine, feces, sick looking animals all stashed into one cage. You can just imagine the smell at these wildlife markets. So it's definitely, in my opinion, the perfect breeding ground for a new virus jumping between animal species. And let's talk about uh, one of those animal species for the moment. We can see it on, on screen for you there. And uh, the, the trafficking and the, the poaching, let's use the right word, Bonet, the poaching of this pangolin, mm. uh, one of the, if not the most poached animal in the world right now, you can correct me on that, it is very much at the forefront mm. of this because of the way that Chinese medicine and, and some elements of Chinese culture believe that uh, the consumption of many wild African animals. We know about the rhino, of course. We know about the pangolin. Uh, we know about lion. Uh, that is causing a bit of a problem over in China as well because it's being touted as some kind of cure mm. for the coronavirus. Again, misinformation. Mm. You know, the, the pangolin has been in the spotlight since the outbreak of this new virus. And if we look at coronaviruses from the past, like SARS, for example, which spread from China to the rest of the world in early 2003, it was believed that the virus jumped from bats to civets to humans. Now, in the case of COVID-19, we can't say for certain which animal it is because studies are still being done. But a new study came out showing that pangolins carry viruses and some of them very closely related to COVID-19. Now, scientists were actually able to crack the genetic code of, of COVID-19, which made them point a finger again to the bat species in China. So this is sort of the, the current thought process. Bats are mammals. They fly in large colonies. And perhaps a bat left a trace of this new virus in its droppings, which fell onto the forest floor. A wild animal, possibly a pangolin, were looking for insects under the or amongst the forest leaves, got infected from the excrement. A person captured this infected animal to sell at the seafood market. The person got the virus somehow, we don't know how that happened, but in turn infected other people at the seafood market. So we can certainly say that we are looking at a virus that jumped between animal species and then to humans. 
The goal now is to sort of figure out the sequence of events, a little bit like detective work. I don't know if you've seen the Hollywood film Contagion mm -hmm. with Matt Damon. I mean, you, you will agree with me. It's, it it's pretty Damon. scary. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely worth a watch because it, it shows a similar sequence of events. It also brings up the issue, and I mentioned this in my introduction, Bonnet, about the suspension, not even a full-out ban, mm. of the importing of, of wildlife products, particularly to Asia. Uh, I was one of the first people, I'm ha happy to admit, with then, when this virus came out from a conservation perspective, uh, that the uh, poaching of these animals were going to stop. Mm. And that's actually quite the opposite, and mm. I've been completely wrong, haven't I? It's mm. actually shown a spike and a surge. Exactly. So China announced a permanent ban, uh, and I think this is a, the right step. Uh, it's a big step taken by them. I think China felt global pressure because already in January they announced a suspension on the trade and consumption of, of wildlife until this virus was under control. Now that there's no end in sight, the virus has spread around the world, they announced a permanent ban. But like you say, this ban can still create loopholes. And, and to explain that, let's take a step back and look at legislation. China's wildlife protection law, for example, bans the hunting of and trading in endangered species. And yet, as you know, this illegal practice still continues. We captured huge amounts of rhino horn and ivory on, on camera both are banned in China, mm -hmm. and yet people still use it. And it's very difficult to control illegal wildlife trade when animal products are used in TCM, traditional Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. You also spoke about it before. Pangolin scales are used in, in TCM. There, there's a belief that uh, it helps with lactation problems as well as arthritis. So this new policy, we have to put it in context. It bans the consumption of wildlife, terrestrial wildlife, including captive bred animals, as food. It does not include banning or consumption of wildlife for other purposes, including uh, such as production in traditional Chinese medicine and ornaments. So if the goal of this new policy was to sort of try and eliminate possible future illnesses emerging from contact with wildlife, it doesn't make sense just to ban consumption as food and not other purposes as well. And once again, it's a policy issue. Bonnet de Bot, thank you so much. I'm sure we're going to unpack this as we continue to, to look at how corona is being handled, where it's come from, and uh, what to do next. As always, a pleasure having you with us, Bonnet. I know, you. know you're working on many, many projects, so you can go and find Bonnet, of course, on social media. Of course, she has plenty to talk about as far as corona, uh, the animal situation, and uh, her next project as well. Bonnet de Bot, thank you very much uh, you. for coming in, filmmaker and television presenter. If you haven't seen Stroop yet, this very much leads into uh, the possibility of COVID-19 breaking out uh, in those markets uh, over in Asia. I highly recommend you go and watch uh, Strip. It will give you a better sense of, of how this could very well have happened.